But now from Heretics. They love these five man plush. Both teams do, do, to be fair. They really <laughs> love these stacks, but Heretics especially. Especially on those pistols. Mm. Like, but now there's the, the worry of a flank opportunity with a turret from Benji that will spot if anyone goes further than the window. But they're locked into A now. Fully committed on forward here. Shadow's just dancing around the smoke here. Can he find anything with oh. the paranoia coming out? Not quite. Narrowly must have missed out there as well. They've got the controller site they were looking for. Here comes a slight reflood, and it's an absolute slaughter! Hell really being given its name there as heretics are absolutely destroyed on the way through. Abova gets one back, but he can't quite find Trex. I know Mitch was picking this man up on the Viper pick on this map, and well, in round one, he's definitely found the impact he needs with the closing 1v1. <laughs> Making me dizzy right there. I know, damn. <laughs> Popping out of heaven, swinging around hell with a flash that just catches everyone. There's the paranoia involved as well. That's one of the big things you're, you're missing on this comp is the breach from Koi, right? Yeah. Paranoia solves that problem, though, This hit, This nicely. is brutal, just like, man. Yeah. I think there's paint shells going over the top as well. Just, that was not the place to be. <laughs> Wolfen is in the zone. Those shots, all headshots, I think, with the Sheriff catching just about everything. So it'll be a similar look from Heretic with an earlier turret to spot out a mid walk-up that uh, oh. <laughs> did go for in the last. Found his man already. This is counterpart going down and over on the Omen on the other side. I do want to talk a little bit about this Viper, because I think on defense, uh, this is a wall you'll see a lot of the time. You can do like just the, the, the like A block off walls, just like horizontal line. Those are nice for retakes, I suppose, but a wall like this gives you garage coverage, allows you to step out into mid outside of B without worrying about the turret that's normally placed on that box outside garage. You'll see the turret placed outside of mid window now because of that. And in terms of C, gives good retake options uh, and uh, little pockets you can hide in. Well, Wolf not quite finding the shots that he sort of needs. I think he tagged onto Benji, but not quite finishing him off. Now the classic out manages to do it. They even threw the flash. It's one stepping out. Kellogg's getting man on the other side. Looks to be a pretty comfortable close down here, as you'd expect with Koi with all the all the guns in the arsenal on side and do indeed march through and secure round two. Where have we said that one before? This seems to be a running <laughs> theme. Round three, as we all know, is where things really start to come online, though. Yeah, you know, you, you got you to ease yourself into the swing of things here in Valorant because it, it gets really fast really quick. <laughs> and uh, oftentimes the rounds can just run right on away from you. So what do we got? Uh, looking at this round now for Koi, Wolfen gets Damn, an operator. Straight on. So they did save into that. Getting an op in round three on defense is so, so powerful. Yike. They are not going to expect to run into that, I imagine, as well. And he takes the higher elevation, doesn't find a shot down to 11. Run and save is the, is the new yeah. one. <laughs> Don't be losing that one. You just dropped so much that, so much of your dollar on it as well. Holds back a little he has bit. has the heel. Jep Juice back up again and now wants to yeah. go in for the repeat. This is the horizontal wall I was talking about. Makes uh, retaking for A a little bit simpler. And it allows your Omen to play maybe a little bit more aggressively on the opposite side of the map. You don't need his smokes for the retake. Oh my word. Gets away with it though. But it comes to you over the top as well. Layering and nice. looking for what they can find. The knives are indeed out. Wolfen's in finding at least one for himself. But it's what comes off the back of it. A couple of kills for Koi is the answer. That is ridiculous. Four on two now. No, the money was not perfect. Sarkso, just a, a martial bot at this moment in time. You can see Mixwell has to fight for, needs someone to step into his crosshair. He can't afford to rest on his laurels, both the blind coming in, he's taken down. Koi are steaming on uh -oh. through. Benji can only find one, and Koi have bounced back after Pearl. And retrieve the op as well, which is probably the main thing to take away from this round, given Wolfen have taken all those savings and invested it right into the round. I love round two buys like that though, right? Where you have one player save big, then drop the op over to Wolfen. Because Wolfen couldn't have bought it himself, I don't think. I think he had the Marshal and some armor. He did, yeah. In the previous. And then, yeah, you have a situation where if he if he dies or if he, if he if your team loses on the opposite side of the map, it can turn into a save very quickly. He even got aggressive, pushing back through his own Viper wall to take that shot down short. That was completely unexpected. But that's what you, uh, We've come to know and love from Wolfen. Wolfen and Kellogg's both very aggressive in their moments. Benji once again has rolled onto the Guardian. He loves picking that up. When they're in the down rounds like these where he can't afford a full buy, it has been what he keeps on jumping in towards picking up and has got some pretty nasty shots there across the previous two maps. Such a crisp aimer just from the two games I've seen here. And he's actually going to play entry for the team, it looks uh, I like. I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> it's like, everyone get behind me. I'm the man. <laughs> <laughs> So distracted by the turret. is like, thank you so much, Benji. I, I really am so glad you bought the Guardian for me. <laughs> Easy donation. I mean, they just keep passing it down one by one now as they fall in line. 
Grouping up towards the garage door still, but pausing out here. In fact, you've even managed to see Nabova work his way up through sewers here and in towards A. Yep, I was able to get the cross. A lot of times, Omens like to go for the embeds. Not going to expect him up that quickly. No. But uh, yeah, now he's been seen. He's paranoid to try and stop this Jeff from taking a shot against him. And oh my gosh, he's going to What the hell, Wolfman? <laughs> Chases him down, doesn't want Len get out of that one. Completely blindsided by Starks on the backside. One back either side, but Wolfman strikes big. It's literally one for one for one, but at the end of the day, it's heretics who come out worse. Three left standing for Koi, and they are off to a flying start here. The crowd getting into it now, too. I mean, there are rounds where you remember that you're in an arena. And, and you remember this. what has been going back and forth between these two teams the last two maps. The, the aggression out of Wolfen with the shorty there is just absurd. You know, like, he is fighting back. He's trying to sort of play that aggressive style to get that mental edge. Pushing on forward. He's playing so aggressive, especially around short. A couple of rounds ago was the operator peaking there. Then it turns into the shorty from above. He is feeling it right now. Whoo. And understandably, a very early timeout for Heretics. Four rounds. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'm really disappointed. Production of Let It Slip. No emotes, I saw it too. No, I wasn't going to call him out for it, you know. I'll allow for half time, but they best make a return or we'd be very, very sad. <laughs> very sad. I'm right there with you. Oh, well done. Well done on the lingo. I'm catching um, up slowly. Yeah, keep I trying, to, to, keep trying to, to build credit with the younger audience. <laughs> Get your clout. <laughs> I'll try, try this for size. This is a real. Ice cream. <laughs> this is a real... I've just farmed clout. You have no idea. I have no idea. No, not at all. This is a real how do you do fellow kids moment. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Back in the swing of things here. Kellogg's does have yeah. the ultimate. They have some options for Vova to go for Careful more here. aggressive teleports with that Omen ulti too, if he so pleases. In terms of actually farming yeah. for something, Benji's just too off. So highly likely that comes online in a post plant, especially if he's grouping with the team instead of playing for the Lurk. Although, I think this turret up in mid, if they're... I, I guess Koi haven't really shown that they would raise the wall early on to, to guard for the walkout, so that turret still provides some value. But if they show presence in Garage and that wall goes up, there's a real possibility that instead of an op being Avova top B, again. it could be someone trying to wrap down on uh, down through mid. Avova once again has got away with this real cheeky yeah. walk-up sewer that no one really seems to be anticipating. Previously, it was a sky flash, but he might just catch the sky in the backside here. Ooh, take your time. Get the rest <laughs> of the team on in there. <laughs> And he goes to the Heaven Teleport as well. Okay, this might be a little bit extra. It's five versus four on the retake. You don't want to overcommit your position up there. Could just turn into Straight a one for in. one. I mean, they feel they've got what they need, so they feel they're in a comfortable spot here to make this play happen. Yeah, if Kellogg's plays oh, close to them, could maybe look to trade back. And actually, the, the stun was used very early for Mixwell. Usually you want to be held to sort of start stop the stall from coming out. Not sure it'll matter, because two players are on the flank, and clock is starting to wind down, though. Wolfen. Seeing how much work he's done before from up on high. Up in hand, looking for anything, someone, anything, can find nothing. And immediately decayed out, silenced out, has to keep himself safely tucked away. And now Cordamento's got to try and round him, but I think time is pretty much done here as well at this point. It's just trying yeah. to do some economy damage. Yeah, get some exits here with that little op peak, maybe even another. The op's gone. <laughs> the op is, they're, they're billionaires, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> I'm rounding up from the... 46.50 in the bank. The notice more down here, a little one for one at the end, and it's really scrappy out on the exits at the end of the day, but things equalize with two apiece left. Yeah. But the most important thing is heretics are on the board. Uh, more important thing, I think, for Koi is uh, this. Two rounds in a row now that that walk-up has happened. I believe it has just been the lurk smoke being thrown, maybe even a teleport from the Omen. I'll pay closer attention this time. I was worried about mid that round like a fool. The fool I was, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, if you're if you're not committing any killjoy utility or like true scouting, you know, a lot of comps will have either the fade or the sova is very common on this map, just for that early uh, scouting up into lobby. But see with that smoke that goes across uh, on long, it allows the omen player to walk up. Now it doesn't guard against like a short player holding that angle, and I think heretics have kind of been gambling off of that. So in the future, we may just see Wolfen sort of positioning the op down in sewers to, to stop that from happening. If that is the smoke that heretics can continue to throw. Taking the time here as well, Heretics hope to sniff someone out inside a garage early on, but I think it was a small little setup from coming out from Cold Amenta, but he didn't get anywhere near enough to get involved in losing HP, trading out utility, so on and so forth. 
Yeah, dog so coming on slow. Round 105 is a good mark to send that good utility out for scouting. Didn't really run into anything, I don't believe, though. So another bird will be used. Blinded. Starkso. Oh, and I catch it. Starkso is really on his own for information. Yeah, using the seekers even too. It's a it's a tough spot to be on that sky with no one really spotting to help you. Has to use the entire kit. Spikes, smokes come out straight on top, and Kellogg's has none of it. Wants to force his way in, but Wolfen's going clay. Pigeon's shooting. Kellogg's taking offline, looking for one more as well. Two quick kills coming in for Heretics. Down to a 3v3. Starkso's so got a no! Starkso knows! He slaughters them! Three kills on the bounce to close things out. What a round for Koi! All smiles in the Koi camp. That round was cooked. Damn. Dancing around the smoke, my word, makes it happen. I just want to see him him navigating here because oh. <laughs> the reactions on that and then Starkso hiding around like they knew there was a sky somewhere on their site. They just couldn't pinpoint the location. He was ratting around inside all those smokes. And uh, now the most unfortunate position to be in when your ult economy is desynced with your actual economy. Oh. Heretics have. <laughs> it's a dump in towards A long coming out from Koi there as well. Just to remind Heretics that there is going to be some resistance. Yeah, this time though, Koi don't want to allow there to be any of these short lurks. No. So they were committing Kolda down into that area. And actually by showing an omen there and a sky, maybe funneling Heretics straight into the operator. Oh boy. This turns into the mind game all the time. And oh, oh he missed. Uncharacteristic from Wolfen. He's only worn into the series himself. Yeah. He was over 20 kills on the last map. Both players surprised coming around this corner at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Not quite the expected outcome, but at this point they're like, oh, we're going towards A, resistance. Let's go towards C. Gone there. Oh, resistance, back towards A. And they're hoping that at this point they'll Ooh. have left. Stark, so still present, as you can see. Headshot. Now forced to back out now. They're not going to have as much stall this time around as they did previously. Nightfall over the top as well. Plays Colder finds one. Tries to TP out, but gets tagged up by the aftershock. Post plant though, they have some really sweet ultimates. If they can farm out another kill, that's a rifle now for He's Benji. Benji's gonna slam the lockdown. He wants to win this round. And that's about it. They've closed everything out. They'll try and do what they might, but there's nothing to be done by the other side. They've forced their way through. Heretics in the control they need, three versus two. But this lockdown is gonna come into effect. Oh no! Oh, oh, pain. Nothing but pain. Oh, you hate to see that. Heretics just steal that round right away. That's the situation, right, where you're like, ah, oh, we don't really want to use those ultimates, but the second you get in a good spot to plant down, you have one rifle in Benji, that's all you need. They take advantage. They did commit their, well, two of their big side sorts here, but the blessing compared to what we saw back in what the first round earlier on was the, the big changeover where they had almost no power ults here. We saw the Nightfall come out, you had the Lockdown on side, Showstoppers there, Breach Ults online. So many things they can keep on rotating here across rounds Heretics, and you'd hope to start getting them online sooner. Still down two and five, but you're starting to see the signs of not so much a comeback, but at least something coming out of this half a man. Oh my God. Straight I mean, under his right armpit. Yeah, well, as he was pulling out the, the pistol and he sort of <laughs> yeah. pulled his elbow up, doing like the chicken dance or something, I don't really know. Whatever it was, he was dodging bullets out there. Absolute madness. Beautiful stuff. Onward to march into a full by round for both teams here. Ooh, and the op is gone from Wolfen. Shados had the rifle in the last round, so he couldn't even buy the operator over. Do they know? I'm sure they'll check it at the very least. Now they most definitely oh, know. Oh, is that beautiful little trade play coming out. Breach short immediately over the top. Stark, so just gonna pretend he's not here. Just pretend it doesn't exist. It can't hurt you if you don't know it exists. Trex is out to find one, Starkso is still here, and he's waiting for the swing to come through. He has been so patient, finds one, doesn't realize that one's backed it through. The Viper Pit comes out at the same time, Starkso is still in position, and able to do some work here, swing comes on through, and Koi has shut down this attack. Starkso owns that spot outside sewers. What a beast! Dancing around the smokes. Now all left on to Boo. Oh. Boo is actually finding a chance here, but no, Starkso shuts that down immediately. Oh yeah. Second time this game he's made it work, and I was about to. When I saw that first kill go down, I was gonna say, Koi have to rethink their entire hold over onto this A site, because even when they're getting aggressive, trying to post back bricks, they're getting shut down. But Starkso playing around that little rat smoke that's been thrown down has been really effective. Mm.
They let Avova get away with it twice. That's all he had. Two chances to walk up sewers, and then since then you've seen Stark so just hard pressed to play top sewers. And he's been doing wonderful work from there. And in a weird way, heretics have just forgotten about it time and time again. Hiding behind smokes, inside of smokes. Doesn't matter what it is. He's playing around it so well. The tough thing is the timings just haven't really worked on it. Because they're throwing utility in, right? They threw the paranoia and everything. He just smoke, dances yeah, on the like opposite flashes side. came in, you name it. Yeah. Also, in case you're wondering like how that smoke is even getting down there, that's a viper. Viper Orb uh, that's being put on that site, even though Viper is playing C side of the map, yeah. that wall that slices down through Garage and mid. So truly having sort of a, a global presence, that, that ability is going to have impact in the retakes too, making it really easy for the players uh, on the ground CT running out on the site, flooding on through. Even if they don't have the Omen, they have options here on Koi's side. The Heretics, more anything else, they're the ones who've got to figure it out. Is of course their timeout. And it's not like it's been, it's been bad. It's just the Koi have been so good in the retake. I, I will say that Heretics comp is really going to come online on defense because they are playing Fade and uh, Raze. That comp is so good at both retakes and also yeah. early round trap plays off of information, getting paint shell kills. They're really investing into that side. Mm -hmm. So the fact they stole away that one thrifty round, I'm just looking at them to steal away one or two more, and they're still in a decent enough Aww. spot heading into the next half. Wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Good technical pause, I hope, and then back into things. Uh, I was just informed by our wonderful producer uh, that uh, he ran into Pansy in the canteen, and that's why there's a tech pause. <laughs> so, so blame the building. Pan Pansy is the reason why there is a tech pause right now. Yeah. Shout out to Pansy. No. Okay, no shout out. To it's her fault. You can't just, why would you do that? And look at that. Alarm, danger, exclamation mark. All the signs to do with danger. She doesn't use her attack for. It wasn't really danger. What would have been better? Well, you don't know. There could be put, something really bad. If they put like food and like the girl with blonde hair emote, put those next to each other. Okay. Baldwin. That would suggest why the timeout happened or the technical pause happened. Right. That's why there's a tech pause, because he ran into Pansy I in the see, canteen. I see, yes. I see, I don't think that's the actual running reason. Running, canteen, Pansy. Mm. Although you probably do running, go with blonde hair, then canteen, to really follow the flow of the sentence he actually told us. Are emotes your thing? Is this what you want to make your thing now? To be fair, I do use emojis a lot. Ooh. A lot. But are you like actual emojis? Or are you old school, like colon, parentheses, smiley face? Because I, I got <laughs> I to respect the classics, man. I'll be honest. Have eight. you ever tried an eight, the number or the number eight, and then a parenthesis? It's like a it's goofy the, smile. It's awesome. Well, yeah, but then a lot of like I use a lot of like chat tools, and like they try they turn that into the sunglasses emoji, which is infuriating. You're it's, so lazy that you can't even no, search for your own emotes. No, that's you what have happens. To have a chat tool do it for you. No, seriously. If I'm, I'm writing a sentence and there's like an A and then a closed parenthesis, and it's like, oh, I'm just gonna assert a sunglasses face here. I'm like, I didn't want that though. So right. I can't really do that, no. Yeah, it's like autocorrect, but with emoji, you just, that's, that's bad news. I like, that's a bad news. I like a colon with a greater than sign. I'm a big fan of stare. Stare. Yeah, in Twitch chat mainly, but. Ah. See, that yeah. one's beyond my bounds of knowledge. Yeah, it's basically what you do, just like in a tech pause, you just stare at your screen and you wait. It's very boring. They aren't talking to each other. They're... This is a real long run in the canteen. Yeah, can we uh, just, I don't know. Can we tell Pansy to just like, not. Just I'll show it. you that's not what is constantly going on now. There is something else that we're working through. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, I, I think the tech posts like this can sometimes be a little bit funky because uh, obviously Koi up 6 2 right now. And while the players often can't talk about the actual game themselves, that doesn't stop your brain from thinking. For some people it might. I don't know. Doesn't um, stop Benji trying to intimidate the enemy team across the arena. Yeah, what's he, what's he doing? Nothing probably. He's, he's smiling, oh, isn't he? Arms crossed. That gives off the real I don't care vibes. Yeah, yeah. A flash of the eyes over the other side, like saying, I'm watching you. Thinking about the victory royale right now. <laughs> <laughs> You've just given me a finishing line. 10 kills on the board right now. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> see if you can wipe out Tomato Town. Ah. <laughs> uh, me and you, we're about That's to get down. I'd love to get into a whole conversation <laughs> about it then. I was just like, you know what, let's not go into it. <laughs> Look, I just need someone to tell me to stop. And like, I never know. I no. never know. I'd like you to carry on. Don't worry about it. Now the problem is, once, once we get to the end of Oh, that was cute. Hold on, go back, go back. We have to know what's written on that. That looks like it might be a gift. 
Oh, it's okay. cute. That is very cute. I can't translate, but must be from a partner, right? Surely. You never know. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Do you think that was for us? He's giving you that bear later. Uh, oh. That's why he's brought it. You just well, don't well, know. Well. Surprise. <laughs> the eyebrows. Okay, now I'm getting mixed signals. So we have found out, by the way, a quick update from producer Sam. Ooh, look at that little movement on the go. I like it. Um, it was an unintentional tech pause. It does mean that because the time was at zero, we've got to do some funky stuff to get back into it. We will back into it not too long from oh, now. Do we Small get to rewind go. time? I don't know. No. Oh, we do get, we to, do rewind get to rewind time. time. Yeah. Yay. We call that. Chrono the break. Chrono Break. They call it Chrono Break in Valorant as well. I think so. Ah. It's like the same thing. Ah. You know. I look, if there's an Alpha and Omega universe in Valorant, I'm sure that like in some like other universe, that's where League of Legends is. Maybe. I don't know. Definitely. They are not in the same universe, surely. Yeah. I mean, I just eventually, I'm hoping for the Arcane crossover one day. Oh, you man. know? Oh my god, here's Omen teleporting into Piltover. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. It would actually be pretty cool. Some thematic maps would be very cool. I could get behind it. I could get behind it. Ah, Wait. yes. Oh, we've even We've changed. added a new emoji. It's yeah. the pansy emoji. Now. Right. Yeah, yeah. Don't really think it looks like her, but... No, her hair isn't that blonde. But then yeah. you can't really mess around with, like, also, hair colors on these. Is she a big smiler? Uh, she can be. Mm. Yeah, it, it depends. It depends. I feel like usually she's just disappointed in, in the teams. She's like, eh. <laughs> I think Pansy is the most chill person She's really like, chill. in the world. And honestly, like, not worked with her before, like working Valorant, I didn't expect it to be that chill. That level of chill. I'm pr am I chill? Where, how'd you rate me on the chill You, you're like the jumped up Zuma, just full of too much energy. Uh, I was literally sprinting in the hallway to be between fair, maps. <laughs> also, when I come into the green room sometimes before a show and you're there reading a book, I'm like, oh, he's so articulate. No, see, I don't make sense as a person because I'll, I'll walk in, I'll read a book, yeah. right? And then I'll come up here and I'll be like jumping around, right? Stretching before the show. Taking then I'll go pictures, between yeah. games, I'll sprint down the hallway and back. And then I'll come up here and I'll lie down for the entire analyst desk yes. on the floor. Yes. Nothing makes sense. It is either 100% or it is 0%. And I'm about ready to go into 0%. If this tech pause lasts any longer, <laughs> I am just... <laughs> that floor's looking mighty enticing. I mean, all Andy I'm saying is it's so nice. You should really try it Andy's, if you're at home. Andy's lay down. What's going on in Twitch chat? I know, I know you've got a little... Uh, I'm seeing Benji smile. I'm seeing Benji Rizzler. Benji Rizzy Rizzy. Fisher, Rizzy Fishy. Are, they, a, are, they emojis, are these the emojis that he's got? Uh, you know, that's a great question. I don't think so. Surely he does. Like I know he's got like a mega following thanks to the Fortnite days. Four million on Twitch or something ludicrous. That's a lot of people. Yeah. I didn't even know there were that many people in the world. Oh, really? Yeah. I know like 12 people, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to go much beyond that. It's big numbers scare you, I understand. Yeah, it's true, it's Too true. many zeros, ugh, no. These guys are yapping. <laughs> Yapping. Oh, yes. <laughs> Welcome to a tech force. Oh, the tech force has That's just hit, awesome. it has just hit zero as I've turned around. I saw the reflection. I was like, oh, zero. Yapping is a wonderful word. Yeah, yapping is a really, really good word. Oh, do yapping. we actually, we, we're in game. Yes. That's what you were telling me. Yeah. Sorry, I was so enamored by Twitch chat. Staring right back at them, but we can get into the game. How about that? All right, check in time. Koi up six to two. Few big ultimates on their side. Heretics are very confused people in the money department. They have two rifles they saved in the previous round, including that armor. Uh, so everything is on Benji and Mixwell here. And uh, Benji's been quite good, but uh, unfortunately Mixwell will not find his this round. And that rifle, not the easiest to recover, knowing there's an operator in the area. Wolfen just better. Sadly on this day, on this occasion, as things are progressing. Two quick kills going back for Koi. Unexpected, well, not unexpectedly, very expectedly, given how the buyers came into this round. Wolfen doing work with the art once again, too. Still two left standing, and Boo will find one. That's up offline at least temporarily, but really can't stick around for this. Wow, that dog from A lobby just cleared so much in mid. Tells you there's not anyone really stepping up outside of B, so you can see Koi very concerned about the garage walkout, playing a very deep position into garage. Actually, I think that's just a jiggle or a jump peek from Kolda. So the only way out is straight on to see Sight right into the crosshair of Trex, who gets floored. Okay. Okay. Watch them run. Suddenly this starts to look remotely doable. A TP well, well, towards well. spawn. And Stark but so the heard that. The Seekers are also tracking down both these players, but a pinch is on the horizon for Stark, though. So. Right. 
Now, this is where the two come to a clash. Again, it's been a Bova that's mainly worked his way out through sewers here. Stark, so it's been a hero holding down his position, but they know where he is. They could swing in together. Nice. And Heretics have just found kill after kill after kill to bring things back to a two versus two. Given it was 5v2, this is a massive blunder by Koi. Five on two with five one five. rifle, maybe, on Heretic's side? They pulled out something incredible here. Shados gets chipped just a little bit. Oh dear, oh dear. Boo's ready. Not really going to be fully able to swing this one together, but they aren't the ones who have to move here. He can see over the smoke. He's looking right down on top of him. Oh no, my takes God. down everything. Four kills on the round. The psychotic ultimate into spawn. Heretics are back after that long delay. That was a real slip from Koi. Again, they were up five and two. They had the op on side, but they choose to isolate themselves. They split up and they pay the price for it. Even sticking as a group and just playing for the retake would have been enough when you're coming up against two. And for Heretics, that's a real steal. The ultimate from Aboba, while that was crazy, allowed him to get the pinch down onto Starkso, who's been dominant over that sewer position. Now it looks like Wolfen trying to get embedded over by stack once again. We have seen this a couple of times, really digs his way in, but here he is going aggressive. In fact, between oh, the both of yeah. doing it, Flash comes out and he wants in. Can't quite find his man. It looks so close to coming out well for Koi. But just shut down, they back away, turn tail at the last second. Not quite aligned, the two players there. They can't slow down. Wolfen has to keep fighting. The only rifle left alive for Heretics. He'll want to peek and find something. Just waiting for someone to overstep. All the while, Trex has gone on the long flank outside of C. I think the alarm bot turned off. Uh, Benji's just out of range for that one. So this flank, well, it might not be fully expected. Mixwell is doing his due diligence and continuing to watch their back. He is rocking up with a pistol, mind you. It's not like he can slaughter the whole yeah. team here in no time at all, but may well be able to take one with him. He can contain them for the time being. And yeah. Benji realized, pulled back the turret or the alarm. Now he's out of range. It's all on Wolfen, though. Holding another spot ready and waiting. One steps round, he's got the angle for the headshot just perfectly ready and waiting. Finds a second, oh. finds a third! Oh my oh. god, Wolfen! Slaughters almost everyone. If over, will put down the kill in three. But he's all that's left. And just like that, Karma is dealt back on the other side. Heretics turn one round on its head, and Koi come back and do exactly the same in the next. Wolfen is just sick. I mean, I love that whole round from Koi. Even the aggressive play that didn't work out. They had a paranoia coming from Link that wasn't just the, the default breach line down sewers. That was into that exit area where Cubby is down long. Sky flashing through the smoke, everything. And then Wolfen does not give up any space on long. Finds all those kills. Just gorgeous, gorgeous play. Still Koi lacking a little bit of uh, restraint up in numbers, right? Wolfen full sends it looking for the ace. Even the late peak from Shados. There are some openings that Heretics may point. be able to take advantage of. Now, all these ults starting to stack up for Koi. I mean, not forgetting that Heretics are only a couple away from, well, Kalox, Boo, and Avova all having theirs online too. So far from the end of the world, but the tools right now are in Koi's back pocket. Now, Koi have pivoted into a heavy C stack now with the operator holding the cross over towards A and actually uh, two players on B, tons of stall here as well. A heavy push coming in, out come the Nano Swarms, jumping his way straight up high. TP up on top as well, a real good like spring forward coming out of the aggressors here. But Shados misses his one man, still manages to find two, make it three at the back of it. Call event to take one in the middle, but Shados converts onto the third. Once again, absolutely decimated on the side of Heretics. They came in a few rifles down and they paid the price for it. A good attempt, but Koi still come out on top. I, I think everyone was dizzy on that site with the double players playing up, the teleports on through. But it's Koi that are keeping clear in these moments. I'm enjoying the noise in the arena. It is heating up, we said it would be. So far, it's feeling like a very dominant Koi affair, admittedly. Barbar liking it. Oh, yeah. Neil, Thank less you. so. All right. Heretic setting up outside of A lobby. There's going to be an op holding that angle real early on here. But of course, default smoke has come in from Heretics, forcing the op off the angle. And Wolfen has to quickly reposition down sewers. How aggressive he does want to get, though? He's just going to be holding that spot out. for now. And he's trying to have a read. It's like, is this actually fake presence with the turret being shot at, or no, sorry, the turret's over on the A site. Bring them down. Garage actually a little bit open for the time being. Probably like me have to find Calder here as well. Talk to him, but no one's going to push that angle. Not in a million years. 
when you know that there's an op on the other side somewhere. So instead, all rotating out towards A. Playing the op deep site A could be problematic, though. Nightfall, turning off your ears, actually will stop you from hearing teleports coming above you, double satchels coming in as well. So it's very hard to hold solo sort of on that area, even with turret to guard down sewers. Players could be on you right around the same time that gets primed. There it comes. Fear. Straight over the top to this wing in too soon. The answer absolutely is no. And Wolfen forced away. They want to chase in deep on this one, but aware that he is well and truly legged it. He is out of there. And Sight has been conceded. Spike but they're working blended. their way back in here as well. Koi, really fancy fighting this one. Why wouldn't you? It is the last round of the half. So many ults online. And with the lockdown coming in as well, Heretics, I don't know if they have time to actually fight forward. Double updraft from Wolf, and he's looking for something. It's not quite there. Boo wants something. One second, two seconds. There will be nothing afforded him. No players attaining, they can now flood their way back forward. It's a retake upon retakes at this point. But Koi are going so aggressive towards Long. Kellogg's gets two for himself, but it's not quite enough. They're still where they need to be. A TP away, a Bova in the place that he loves being. A Sewer Rat crawling on forwards, and it's two kills for Heretics. They get the 4-8 half. Koi in a good spot going on to the attack. Big round win to close it out there. Benji with the delayed lurk, dancing outside of the lockdown. Not an easy round to win whatsoever, but the two kills Kellogg's managed down long. Okay. Yeah, absolutely love to see it. Now Heretics get to go to defense. Hinted at it before, but with Fade and Raze, you love that combo for the that defense. That combo is nasty. The A lobby control you can get off of information. You could have, you know, snap breach done into the, the Fade Raze combo. If you hold on to it, you, you can play heavy retake. Anyone tries to plant the spike, those two abilities need to be catching the planter. That's a free kill of any sound. So there's a lot of fluidity in how you want to play the rounds, whether it's a little bit more aggressive towards a lobby or whatnot. Does mean it's a little bit harder to get an operator into your team comp, right? You can put it onto the raise if you get it, but not quite as mandatory, I think, for the way heretics are going to want to play the game. You're going to want to play a very heavy strong side with a fade raise, breach, more than likely. Look for those catches. The opposite side, going to be playing mostly retake, playing stall. That's where uh, Benji comes in. Good replays here from the entirety of that first half, as well as that main focus point. Really did feel like, hey, that's where a lot of the action really kicked off, where all the big plays were made. Not really any focus out towards the seaside at all. I think a lot of respect being shown by Heretics towards Wolfen with the arm. It is insane, I think, because Koi played that half so well, mm. but there were two thrifties that went the way of heretics, right? Like, half now, of their oh, round oh, oh. wins are crazy. What's that? Fish investigation versus a hench fish. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to decide. I think, I think the right one, that's, that's, that's Benji, I assume. Strong fish. <laughs> Strong guy. It's got a reference. I really can't. Surely. It's a versus thing, obviously, so... My head hurts looking at this. Any knowers? Want to give us a hint, production? As we try and decipher this, no, this magnificent is puzzle. This is bad. You know what? Instead of deciphering the puzzle, let's check back in with the stakes. Because that's more important than any little fun little emoji game that we can be playing. We can enjoy both. This is a knockout match! Eight to four! Koi smashed back on Fracture. But every single game, it's been the second half where it's turned, right? Koi, the first half, we're down 5-7 on Fracture. Then come around, only give one round away. Same thing back on Pro for Heretics on map two. Running away with that, only giving up two yeah. in the second half. These so. first two rounds are going to be the big ones. You it's really going to set the pace. The I think if Koi win these first two, say goodnight, Heretics. Oh, it's a one for one to kick things off. Dash down short, as a matter of fact, Wolfen. Getting way in front of it. Now, Spike still left outside of grass. And this is the stack, the raise, the fade, playing Sees together. a lot of them. Sees two tucks in as well, but in a spot here where he's managed to get past at least and working his way up through sewer. It's the reverse effect. It's Wolfen working his way up behind them here slowly. I don't know if Kellogg's and Boo bit on that. I think they're expecting the embed. It wasn't a perfect smoke cross. The timing could have worked that he got oh. out. Now another oh, timing. Unfortunate timing and a rare C push coming on through, but they've got control of sight. Koi bringing two down and Boo and Kalox have got it all to do. Oh, well, well, well. Perfect information from Wolfen on the Lurk. Here's everyone. So they're going to play three players off site. They want to stall as long as possible. Don't give early flights over to Heretics because that flank will destroy this retake. One enemy oh. remaining. 
This one, yeah, is now going to look real painful. Oh, they got a talking to in halftime. Hold, but, but there's no way, because the, the way they were playing the first half, they would be up three versus one, even two versus one sometimes. They would play really aggressive, even back on Pearl. That is a different look. Up three of them one, sat watching side. Yeah, th th four versus one with three down long on pistol, and you're giving that up. That's the right call. I love it. But uh, you can see they are going to play this one by the books to close. They know how much it matters. No, don't really don't give them the ult orb. Don't give them that. Yeah, okay. There we it's go. Denied away. Raise ult more impactful than uh, Viper ult on, uh, on attack. This is where I get concerned. They likely win the second one, turn it into a 10 4. Two rounds to at least guarantee the overtime, three to net the win and send heretics home. Mm. Oh, a bit of frustration there. It has been ups and downs consistently. Heretics, they did get a... No, no, no. There's nothing they can really do here on the buy. Three phantoms, as a matter of fact, and a bulldog. I'm all in for a thrifty. Another one. <laughs> now, I, I will say Koi... Oh, early aggressive play. Just four players looking to crunch on down. Snakebite drops in behind as well just to try and abate them for a short amount of time. Yeah, you can't really But all the pushing, aggression though. is straight up in towards C. Sight's been conceded. They are immediately up. And there should be Spike going down in no time at all. One thing I hope from the calling of Heretics is they, d they don't overcommit into calling these early uh, aggressive plays on defense. Like, I do like them, and I like mixing up the pace, but if the if the pattern from Koi just has to be, hey, chill for five to 10 seconds, and you're gonna find where Heretics are sprinting, it becomes very easy to sort of play in Spawn, pivot into mid, into C, if you see that A aggression uh, early on. There we go. Great paranoia across the back. I think that's onto two as well to shut them out for a short amount of time. Anything to slow down Heretics here and force them to get a little bit desperate. Can only play in Koi's favor. Oh, a great shot from Mixwell. Round in the corner and finding out Wolfen. But there is so much work to do here. They're going to try and stick, and they've not got a hope in hell. With these rifles on the other side, they've got a challenge, but simply can't do it at long range. Koi have played it out so well. And that will be then going up to 10 and 4. Off goes to Spike. These last two players. Roasted and toasted. And Heretics now in the danger zone as Koi hit double digits. Danger zone denying ult orbs over to the fade and the raise. You hate to see it if you're a Heretics fan. And for Koi, I mean, look at the, the stalling power in the post plant they have too, right? From quadruple mollies. Just having the Viper in this comp allows you to play offsite way more effectively. Even when there's smokes going down long, you can wait out those smokes just by having mollies go in consistently. You know, sort of use those killjoys early, then go into the, the Viper. And also, because of the Viper Wall, you have really creative ways to deal with early A Lobby presence, right? This becomes a Lurk Wall, right? To get past A long, it stops uh, enemy team from being able to opt very easily down sewers. You have to take the decay damage to fight on past this. This time, Kellogg's takes that gamble. Looking really for it, but it doesn't want to stick into it very long. No. I was off the back of the uh, breach that came through the behind him as well to give him some support on the swing, but just obscured too much by the smoke, just the wall, everything really working against him. Nothing really to show for his efforts. But a big push coming in. Koi looking to flood their way forward. Immediately in goes Wolf and pays the price for it as Kellogg's finds his man. Mix one into another. Trace there immediately. And Heretic's looking to stabilize a bit here. And Kellogg's just farmed his uh, paint shells back off that one, so a little bit more chip damage. Heretics just don't want to give a fight away. Maybe a few jump peaks. They, they need jump peaks to have uh, perfect information of what's actually happening. Down towards A long. They don't make a run for C. But this is correct. Oh, actually. They are. I wonder if there's an idea here for Benji Fishy to, to fall out of his turret range. And then maybe it doesn't get broken. You can go back into range to, to click into that later in the post plant. He actually just pulls it back entirely. 30 seconds the entire left. setup working with the team. And that will be an option in the, in the post plant. So making sure they can play full util here. Oh, they I really thought we'd see Trex get there a little bit quicker, but it's taking things so carefully here. Uh, I mean, they're really hoping that one player from Heritage is like, oh, they could go see. Let me rotate over and find out. Catch them alone. And then it's a one-on-one -on -one fight. So that's why they're really taking their time on it. It's also why it's just herd mentality from, from Heretics. It's Planted. full on buddy system. I mean, it's the way to play it. Look at the couple of rounds that we yeah. saw thrown back in the first half where the 5v2 was taken down to many 1v1s and look at what happened. Now, the main concern is could they have pushed into spawn? That's why they're all really going through B, now sending Boo out to be a potential garage pinch. A player in garage could absolutely carve them up. They find nothing there and can now make their way into the C site. No flashes for this. This will be an absolute travesty. 
If Heretics can't get this one back now. Great Let's paranoia here. over finds one. The swing comes out, but can't quite close. The Fishman Ben finds what he needs. Heretics move up to five. Really critical round oh, for them no, there. No, no, you don't deserve my invention. <laughs> it always feels like a personal attack. <laughs> It's good movement, and I'm, again, I'm glad that Heretics did stick together there, given what we'd seen happen back in the first half. Even though I believe it was Koyu who were the ones coming off worse for wear, when they were the ones in a five versus two. Just well structured, both teams looking a little bit more disciplined in the second half. Now we get to try all over again. Not quite a full buy coming in. Got the Guardian on side for Heretic. Still, I'd say overall in great shape. Pretty much everyone on full rifles here. Wow. Just the one Guardian coming out. I wonder if Koi might have heard the, the Ray's crossing uh, in the last round, because they even spent the Molly in that one this time, just to get that walk up. It's a fast hit into me. Just an alarm bot to spot them out there, and a very yeah. easy plant for them. It's what they want, right? It's trying to get out of dodge and avoid away. He just managed to just about get away with it. Two quick kills, though. Heretics, as mentioned, starting to really wake themselves back into this. But now they've got to hunt down and find these kills. There's one chucked in close as well. They know about it as well. Now they've got full visibility. The smokes have expired. This is where it gets a little bit ropey. Not for Heretics, though. Four kills to their name. Trek's all alone by himself. Molly comes out but doesn't find his man. He'll opt to save here. I think Koyo actually caught themselves in, in a weird timing there with the with the Viper wall because uh, Trex threw up that wall so early on to have potential lurk. I think it was down almost before the spike even got planted. That left A-Link completely open. Heretic sort of pumped on through. Let's see exactly how that happened. Yeah, because again, there's just absolutely nothing watching the angle. Even the flash from stars was just a little bit delayed trying to refight into A-Link. It's a great swing out of back, off the back of the garage push as well just to completely collapse the back line of the hole from Koi. Now that uh, the, the setup on B has been spotted, it gets pivoted just a little bit from Benji. Now having the turret there, pretty hard to, to spot that and, and manage to break it. And the alarm bot should just be placed inside the Omen Smoke. You can see it down long. And uh, that gives you some options. You can hard hold short if you're solo, right? So you have control over both lanes of sight. Kellogg's almost in spot to catch over the top of the smoke. Paint shells coming out, just trying wow. to bait them for now. But we've already seen the jet come all the way through. Wolfen once again, deep in the battle line, and the aggressive Viper spit comes out. Now that's why they've got control of the B site. They're really going ham for this site yet but again. But they're not going into B. Look at this, they pivoted into C. The trick as old as they come here. Spike should be planted with relative ease as the fight goes into Link. Sarkto falls back just on eight HP. It is by no means a clear cut round. It was at least enough to waste a fair bit of time on B as you say, because now it's the heretics to force their way back through, mainly through spawn. And look at this, Koi sending all three players in towards Garage. Yeah, they want to get a backstab on here. One player being left behind, make it two. Seeing what they can do here. This bot starts, so out flash comes on through. And he'll get out. What? One comes through. The second one on the rifle, but no. Benji finds his man. One left standing here is Benji in the one versus one against Starkso. Starkso won't lose it. Benji will be kicking himself for that one, but it's Koi up to 11. That could be the round to do it right there. Starkso stays alive. Koi were down a three on four. Starkso had eight HP. And throughout it, just managed to find the right spot. I thought this hit for sure was going to cost them. No clearing of backside, just going straight up and losing that fight was brutal. But then the fact there was that one kill farmed into backside. Starkso stays alive with that plant pretty wide out there in the open. Starkso could be just about anywhere. And now Koi can feel it just two rounds away for them. Very understandably, a timeout coming in. I would assume it's from Heretics, although the logo I can see on the screen is indeed Koi. Maybe taking time to a bit of a mind game here as well, where they're just like, oh god, what else can they throw at us? Because you get to this stage in the game, it is indeed a Koi timeout. You get a chance to play this one out. You've got two rounds here you need to win. You can plan this one out however you like. You can stack up alls to force yourself at least through towards 12. You can come up with something else a little bit crazy. As we've seen across the last couple of rounds, the hard B hits. They've tried a few different things. Now it's time for some more innovation. Yeah, well, main thing they're going to be talking about, obviously, the patterns that, that barbar has been seeing and how Heretics are playing the defense, whether it's the uh, tons of a lobby presence, the Killjoy utility set up mostly around mid, but also the retake ults. Mixwell and Benji both have their ults coming online. So in a post plant, what this indicates to Koi is they need to fight forward. So if it's a B plant, take control of A link, right? You need some other way to get into sight. If it is a C plant, right, taking control of garage, maybe fighting into link, more ideas like this. 
have to be on their mind. I mean, we saw that back on Fracture, remember? We spoke about it at the time. They'd take sight and then push beyond that. Whoa! We just sat all that long. <laughs> Out of charges. The, the, wait, the tether came in. The seize, but there's no nade. This is the second or third time I've seen it this half. The util combos have not been coming together. And I don't know if it's because if Kellogg's couldn't quite hear what was happening there or, or what the situation was, but it has not been perfectly synced between those two players. And that's why you take this comp for that duo for the defense. Quite rotated back out from A entirely. Opted to abandon the Viper wall and instead put their way in through Garage. Benji's in a good spot here as well. Gets sprayed on the way back through. And now they know the danger is brewing in mid. Koi obviously going to respond here. Choose not to commit. And instead rotate back out towards spawn here. 40 seconds down, but could work their way back over towards A. Look at this wall, though. It's a tough embed to hold. You have to fight a very active angle. And then even if you try to run out, if there's another player there, you're always getting spammed through that wall. So yeah, maybe good for one, good for two, I'm not likely. Trial. Here we go though, it's a split into the, into the seaside. Zeke is coming out over the top as well, just gonna at least for now force the defenders back. Give a little bit of room towards what? Coy, and with that space, they capitalize. There's one in the back, he's got the right idea, trying to shoot skyward, but not quite finding his target. It's Mixwell on towards one side, and it's a bit confusing. A couple of players on site, one dancing around inside the smoke. Who else other than Stark, so? Gets one before being shut down, but sight is theirs. The TP over towards A. And Heretics, all their ultimates just fought on site. They weren't playing off site, they weren't playing retake, anything like that. It is now two against three. Koi with a chance to go on to match and series point. And it's all Trek spotting out of Vova, finding it, but no, boo, in the one on two. Has the right idea and finds his man. Three in the round, all as well, committing it out because he knows just how much this round means. Has the trails going up now? Does he know him inside of heaven? He no, he doesn't. He, he has to know, yeah, the, the trails go up ramp. He has a perfect idea to seize. He can't win it like this. This is his problem now. He's got to force a peak to come out. It comes on through. Obviously a little bit low on sound here. He has to force and look it out. But he should be able to win this one out. Cold Amenta takes it through, making use of that height advantage. What a kicker. Boo. So nearly had that. It just slips through the fingers. The kills he found ridiculous. Then the Nightfall 2 knew exactly where the third was but it couldn't come together. And you have to question the decision from Heretics. Maybe mind games on mind games there, trying to, to play fast pre-take on site when the enemy team is gonna be expecting you to play off, but there's a reason why they expect you to not to be there. And it costs them. Last chance saloon for Heretics. Yeah, of course Mixwell used his ultimate in that pre-take, but Benji ended up falling. They've got a couple of big ults to play here, big space makers as well that they can make use of on the defensive side, but you've just seen the mobility of Koi, the willingness to poke forward, find information, and rotate over towards other they're sides. They're fighting forward again. been their strong piece, but they're forcing in, yeah. And they are abandoning sight. That one is pretty tight. They have no idea that Wolfen, yet again, has just marched his way forwards. Showstopper comes out. It feels like too little, too late. Boo, yet again, has got it all to do against three players on the side of Koi to keep them in it. He's gonna find one. But here we go, all comes out. It could not get much harder than this. Get swung on. Colamenta closes it out, and yet again, Koi win the, the El Clasico here in the LCQ. Koi pull through. They will fight another day here in Berlin. With the last chance to make it all the way through to champions at the end. That would be the underdog story for the ages. Of course, Team Heretics end up falling short.